quite a few times I'd wake up in a remand center. I was often scared to knock on the window to ask the guard, hey, what am I in here for? You know, I was scared he was gonna come to me and say, oh, you just killed somebody, you know? Or you just killed, you know, something like that. And that's very scary and it freaked me out and I didn't wanna, I didn't want that anymore. Cop just ran up to my window with a gun, like pointed right at my head, pulled me out of the car, put me on the ground with a gun right to my temple. I was like, I was scared, like scared the shit right out of me. Couldn't believe it. I was just in shock. So right after that, I went and got high as soon as I got out of jail. Instead of dying or get, getting killed, you know, I'm just getting out of the, the lifestyle of the alcohol, the drugs, and the crime. This is a time in my life where I have more to lose than I've ever lost in my whole life. Just because they have the drug beat doesn't mean they have their lifestyle changed. Like, I think that's what this place has changed. Not only your drug habit, like to quit drugs, it's just your lifestyle too as well, I think. Before it was like, I'm going to do three months, you know, make everybody happy and then I go home, you know. And uh, now it's more like I need to do the, do the, do the, do the program no matter what it takes. I'm just trying to better myself, I guess, and and it'll be like be a set an example for other young Aboriginals or whatever you want to call them, natives. I don't know what to call them now. <laughs> I couldn't believe that I was actually, I've been here almost six weeks and that I wanted to go and use. I couldn't believe it. I just felt, man, I'm totally not ready. You know, if I left tomorrow, I, I'd probably last maybe a day or two out there. Standing there, I seen some, one friend and two other guys, he was with that and, you know, he came up to me, asked me for a cigarette on here. It's kind of intoxicated, but feeling good and said, let's go. He says, where? Let's go drink. Let's go get drunk. I didn't tell him where I was. Lost my job. I had a job then. I lost that. And yeah, I'd sleep under this trailer when it would rain. I'd drink there. And that was uh, one time I told myself again, you know, what the hell am I doing here? You know, got back on my feet again, and I went to a treatment center. But that didn't work out because it was only a uh, 29 six-week treatment center, like, you know, it wasn't long-term. Today I wasn't feeling so great, and I just, you know, I don't want to go upstairs and stay there up all day, all day, but I don't want to be downstairs and be miserable with everybody, right? Because how's that going to help anybody, and how's it going to help me, you know, despite being grown too, because I feel not so good. I just went for a uh, checkup, like a physical. Like, you see how everything's going. Like, I'm overweight, eh? And it says your sugar's good, blood sugar, blood pressure is good, your liver's so abnormal, but he said it's okay. So your kidney's all right, your heart's good. And that was just a month ago, and I kind of took that. Well, actually, he was surprised. He said, I'm very surprised that these came out like this, he said. How do you stand up when you have skates on? Oh. All you have to do is walk away penguins, right? <laughs> it's really hard to get your foot in there. <laughs> Wait, try that foot. It's the wrong foot. I'll get it. Wow. Step down. Push. Is it fit? Yeah. Yeah. My dad did not do the job for me, which I figured I was entitled to as a child, as a father who was there, who cared, and who spent time and taught me how to be a man, okay? Now my son, I can change that. I can make sure that he doesn't have to go through that. I know, I know you know that I started another family a few years ago, and there's a complete, utter, dark place in me 
a box that, in, in my views, I cannot open. And it, is, it is pretty hard without dad. Like, without, you know, without going, you know, without a father, you know, to do something with him, eh? I thought about that, and it's pretty shitty. Oh, I just seen mine getting drunk all the time, and eventually I ended up doing that. <laughs> it's a suicide bomber inside. I mean, not like I'm thinking suicidal, but I mean, if I open this or go closer, both, it's going to go off. And it's a, because I cannot talk to my kid and my, my son, Blaze. I don't see him. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe by trying harder to be a father to Wesley, I can make up for the fact that I'm not even seeing this other kid. And you see, you see that there's two different roads I'm going down. I'm trying to be the best father I can be to Wesley. And my son, Blaze, I'm just like my own dad. <laughs> and that, that eats me up, man. I don't know how it eats me up, because I try not to deal with it, but I, I know it, it totally eats me up, man. I feel like a failure and a success on one hand, you know? Well, I've seen a lot of some stuff when I was younger that may have, you know, not traumatized me, but just, well, traumatized me, I guess, but not to a serious extent, but messed me up psychologically. About that age in that picture I showed you, I don't know, it just, I don't know how it affected me, I just, I just built up anger because I was a kid and I couldn't do nothing and, you know, now if I seen it, you know, it would have been different, but when I was just a kid like that, all I could do was watch and, you know, cry, but yet at the same time, you know, I was pissed off. We learn by other people's behavior primarily in our families, <clears throat> in our, within our peer groups, what we learn in schools and church and other settings uh, is, is what we end up doing with our own behavior. Under the disease model, you accept your identity as an addict or an alcoholic. In fact, you have to make that proclamation when you attend meetings. But under the life process model, you focus on problems and not labels. And you know why that's so important? Because you're not that for the rest of your life. I believe once an addict, always an addict. Really? Yeah. Sure, you did but say I that mean, once an addict, always an addict. I do believe once an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic for the rest of your life. But that's about labeling, isn't it? Sure it is. How helpful is that attitude? Think about it when it comes to helping people to change an, an addiction. I can tell you one thing for sure. It's not going to change if you don't have a really good period of sobriety and abstinence first for a long period of time till you're comfortable with living a life being abstinent and clean because then you will begin to sense hey I am no longer an addict and other things right. I can begin to view myself differently and hopefully in this treatment program we're, we're helping you to learn different ways of solving problems so you're not resorting back to the old ways that's what's going to get you into trouble it is an entirely different way of viewing your problem. And all we're saying is it's possible. It's a different approach, very different than a disease model approach. Yeah, I plan on staying longer than a year. I'm not sure I'd have to no, I haven't discussed that with my key worker yet, and I don't know how long, as long as it takes, as long as they're, because I still think, you know, there's some stuff I need to work on. And the test is for cocaine, THC, opiates, and meth, methamphetamines. Methamphetamine. Cocaine is the orange one? He's clean for cocaine, no cocaine. Fucking A, man. Um, the purple one. Fucking A. 
He's clean for opiates and THC. He's clean for THC. Fuck it. Those are the ones we tested him for. So all four are clean. So this guy can clean. Now we give this to Les, and he can take it and dump it out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it out back. back. No, you no, take it out back, and you dump it right away. I thought I was gonna fail that fucking piss test. Why? Because I just don't trust myself. I don't believe in myself that enough, I guess. But you didn't use, right? So no, didn't I didn't use, use, but I had a dream last night that fucking I used. And I woke up to, like in the middle of the night sometime, I don't know when it was, thinking, holy shit, I just fucked up my whole program. Mm -hmm. I had guilt all day. And then especially after I find out a bunch of people are cracking, I thought maybe the guy come and snuck into my room and fucking said, last here, have a hoot. And I took a hoot in my mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. Which is fucking totally possible, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done it so many times before. Yeah. I've, I've like, I've smoked in my sleep, man. Just when I look at this freaking whole picture of what I'm doing, what's going on in my life, it's just, it's only just beginning, man. Three months is just, it's gone, man. Where's this three months and how come I'm not fucking cured? <laughs> you know, it's just all starting now. It's starting now. Now I gotta deal with myself, my inner shit, and that's gonna take me a few months for sure. And then what's what's gonna follow that, you know? What's gonna follow that? So I've fixed my drug problem to a degree. Now I need to fix myself. When I my, my how I feel about myself and how I view myself. What will come after that? Now I gotta fix something else, right? Okay, Kevin. Uh, we're starting your nine-month TPS. Mm -hmm. So, what progress have you made since your last evaluation? Got my uh, what do you call it? Uh, beginner's license. Okay. Okay. What have you learned uh, that's been helpful to you? I know, just to uh, take it easy. Don't try to uh, deal with everything at once. Like overwhelm yourself. <clears throat> so, taking it one day at a time? Yeah. No, things don't go your way. Accept it, I guess. Which I'm doing more now. Especially on the outside, if things you can't change on the outside, you know, just, you know, <clears throat> it can't be changed anyways. Do you have any new goals? Yeah, that's so nice. Yeah, if it was possible to, uh, Maybe stay a little longer. Is there something in particular that you want to change in yourself before you leave? Lots. That's why I want to stay longer. <laughs> I don't know. Just my education, I guess. Like my schooling. Okay. Because so I want to still want to get my 12. And okay, so that's an ongoing goal that yeah. you already have. So you want to stick with that for now until you've completed that, and then look for a new goal. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, don't over, try not to overwhelm myself, just, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so I know now, you know, the thoughts are always going to be there about drinking or whatever, and, but the confidence to say no is, I think I'm getting stronger. One thing I didn't mention when I was laying, living in that van, I thought about getting really drunk and, you know, going to a, like there's a train tracks right there, right, and just passing out on the tracks. You know, the next day, I won't get up. And that's another thing that woke me up too, was it's gotten to the point where I'm thinking like that. That's really not healthy to be thinking that way. <laughs> That's what I think it's all about my stupid teeth for crying out loud. I don't even know why. I have no teeth and I just hate it. And I'll get my teeth in April. <laughs> 
So I'm not worried about it. You know, I won't look like a hillbilly. See, when you look at somebody with a perfect set of teeth, man, you take them seriously, or you, you know, you really, and they have nice white, nice straight teeth. That you know, this person takes care of themselves. This person is this and that, all on a positive note. But you look at somebody who's got snaggle teeth or missing teeth. He's a hillbilly. He comes from a farm, or he, you know, just stereotype, right? And I fit into those bad stereotypes because I got some ugly teeth and I'm missing teeth. I knew something was wrong right away when I walked by the windows from a car or these businesses and I'd look and I'd see myself and I knew right away what was wrong but I just didn't want to face it and deal with it. Until I woke up. It came up in my head on my way back from buying cigarettes. Cool, I could probably score around here somewhere. And I said, what the, hell am I, what the hell am I thinking, you know? And I think I just caught it. I think that that's done. That part of me is done. I just need to work on a few little things with myself, get my IDs, get a job, and poof, I'm gone. You know, I've heard people get mad at new members, other people saying, oh, they're lazy. It's not their fault, you know, like, that's why they're here. They're here to get into a routine, and they never had it before they came in. And I've been told, like, it's a work-based program, and somebody who comes here who is, you know, can't work, you know, sh shouldn't be here, like, they should be in a hospital or somewhere or somewhere else, but you know, when you come here, you gotta work, you gotta get into a routine, you know, make your bed, clean your room, you know. But at this point, I'm, I'm totally looking forward to like being clean and sober without crack in my life and alcohol and all that other crap. But uh, I don't think, uh, I don't look at smoking a joint as something so bad. Uh, I know it's kind of a gateway drug in some sense, but I just don't think it's the worst thing I can do. Right at this moment, I'm sure that's gonna change in me. Uh, Got my foot out the bloody door, man. I can't wait. I'll do whatever it takes to get out of this place now, so. See, I know that's what everyone will think because I have a bad attitude about being here. Everybody thinks I'm gonna go do drugs and shit. Like, no, man. I'm just, I'm tired of this place. It came on my own and now they don't want me to leave. And it's not even my say that I can leave anymore. So fuck them, man. That's the way I see it. Like, I'll do what they say. I'll kiss all the asses I need to kiss until I get out of here. And that's how it is. I did all the programming I need for myself. It's, my attitude doesn't have to change just for me to quit using drugs. Like, I came here to change cool. I came here to change like the fact that I was addicted to drugs, man. I changed it. I've learned other healthy ways of living. I've gotten off the shit long enough that I don't have the cravings anymore. I don't think about it. I've been, I've been, you see, even better than having me, me having a bad attitude. I'm not running to drugs with my bad attitude like I would have before. Now I just don't give a shit about these people. I'm so happy that I'm clean, man. I'm so happy for this. Grateful for the fact that I finally took responsibility. Stepped up to the plate and quit doing that shit. And uh, took responsibility and took charge of my life. You see, I, I want to be, I want to continue taking charge of my life. And by that, by, by part of that is like getting a job, getting my own place and living, you know, and just moving on. I don't know, it has good support there, like, just knowing it's there, the feel of it just feels like, I feel Indian. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, yeah, well, Mom, so I'm worried about my one year coming up in June 8th. And, and I don't know, it's on my mind, even my homework. I'm thinking about the speech too, I gotta write that out. I hate it here, Blair, man. I hate it here, buddy. Well, if I could be honest, I don't think you're ready to go there. I got, but see, but that's, that's... Why would you think that, man? You think you, just, you don't have a job yet. You have a negative attitude. If I had a choice today that I could just leave here, I would. 
I would pack I'm my sure shit you right now, sure you and I would leave. I would I would go, and I'd stay at my brother's. I'd get a job probably by, well, it's Wednesday. Right? I'd probably get a job by this time next week. And in a month, I'd have my own damn place. The only th good thing about this place right now is that I'm going through a little bit of things with Connie. We're doing some work, and I mean, that's, that's good. basically that's easy. something you can keep up after you leave, too, so. Yeah, that's something I'm totally willing to keep up, but mm -hmm. you know what, man? I don't think that... You get to meet with me every week. That's cool, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm just a pain in your ass, so. You gonna drink when you leave here? No. No? No, not until after my court is over and I'm done with that. Then I can make a decision whether or not I'm gonna have a beer or not, you know. Mm -hmm. You think you will? I don't know, probably not. Probably about, after a year of being... What about um, a joint or something? A joint? No, I don't think, no, I don't think so. I thought, well, I thought for a while I wanted to. I thought, man, it'd be nice to smoke a joint. But then I thought really hard about it. I was talking with somebody about it. and I, I don't know, it just made me see that, you know what, like, if I allow myself like to get my foot in the water that much, why not just dive in, right? Mm -hmm. So what have you learned here? I've learned how to get up on time. How to stay clean. How to stay in, clean. In here. In here, yeah. And uh, regular routine of, like, uh, working. I've learned that I don't give a shit who likes me anywhere. You know, because anyways, I'm a pretty good guy as it is, and people will like me just for who I am, and I don't have to try and be something else, you know. I think that's pretty good, you know. Before, I would, I would act like a gangster, man, when I was out on the street. I'm not a gangster. <clears throat> I'm far from a gangster. We seen a couple guys I knew and drank with, and like they're still the same. They still look the same, and I see myself in a mirror every day, and I just look. Well, I'm the same guy, but I, I guess I'm different. Like I know I'm different. Like I've changed uh, uh, quite a bit, and it's like I feel. Like, I want to yell at them and just grab them and say, what the hell are you guys doing? What are you doing? You know, you're still out here. You're doing this shit and killing yourselves. And But, you know, I can't do that. But that's what I felt like doing, you know. And I helped the one guy out a couple of dollars, eh? This was maybe a couple of dollars. So I gave him a tune talk to him. Well, I'm going to school and I feel much better, much different than the first time I came in. I think I matured and I could probably get work if I, if I didn't have school or if it wouldn't interfere with my school, you know. But then I'm glad sometimes they didn't let me go because, you know, I often think, you know, what if I did, you know, would I really, what if I went downtown to my bank and cashed my check and what if I went shopping and seen some friends, you know, I think about that too and would I be able to say, you know, am I strong enough? And But now 11 months, like even after nine, six months, it was kind of, in nine months, I was kind of, I seen a couple of people on the street just said no to them. And just recently, I went out a week ago, last two weeks, and, you know, I told, I was able to tell people, you know, I'm trying to quit, I'm going to quit drinking, and I don't want no part of that lifestyle anymore. And they respect that, eh? they still stuck around there and talked to me, and it's not like they turned away and said, oh, I got to go. Going home for the weekend has helped me clear my mind. Come back, all right, <clears throat> fresh start, you know. Forget about everything negative and just look look forward and moving on. Made right decisions, made the right choices while I was gone, right? Could have went and got high, could have bought some crack, could have smoked some weed. I didn't. I came back. Kevin is a role model for the entire community and is a glowing example of what you can achieve if you put your mind to it and not give up. I would like you all to join me in congratulating Kevin on his one year anniversary. Kevin, this is a 
The circle within a square represents a community within a community. Check. I pulled the wrong one out. <laughs> okay. Okay, the BHF has taught me a lot, especially in establishing a healthy relationship with not only my inner child, but with family as well. Before coming here, I couldn't remember when the last time I gave, that I gave my mom a hug and told her that I loved her. I love you, mom. Now that I find myself, now I find myself telling her all the time, this place has done so much other things for me. I can wake up in the morning now and learn to appreciate the smallest things in life, like feeling the sun shining on my face, making my bed, doing the dishes, brushing and flossing, doing my laundry, to the big things like setting goals for myself and actually accomplishing them. Speaking of goals, the biggest goal for me was completing my grade 12. It was an easy task. It took a lot of work and dedication on my part to be where I am today. Thank you. That's all. threats of violence, no drugs and alcohol, uh, keep swearing to minimum, if you have an issue with someone, sit a comfortable distance away from that person, group is for good and bad feelings, Said in here, stays in here, no finger pointing or belittling, group is now open. Ever since you've been saying, well I know I'm out of here, that everything's just falling apart for you. Yeah, that's a good point. When are you out of here? Pretty soon. The first. July 1st, eh? Oh really? But he could be out of here sooner. Yep. If uh, things keep escalating, they are because, you know, we like it just. I don't so what's been like, what's been what what's been happening to, with uh, like okay so. Um, I don't know how to put it because all of a sudden not, you just I'm don't not, give a shit. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I fucked up. Like I was, shouldn't have been upstairs. Unaccountable. I, I fucking fell asleep and it was stupid, man. I should have said, I should have never even laid down after I cleaned my room. So you fucked up? Yeah. Shit, okay, yeah. and you're owning up to it? Good. Of course, man. What am I going to do? Like, uh, there's nothing I can do. Okay. I think you should pat yourself on the back for the good things and, you know, stand up I do. and straighten some of the bullshit out that's going on in your life. I just give myself a shake, you know? Just stay motivated. Just be, you know, seriously, though, Tom, all the things have been just, it's just been bringing me down, man. And that's what, where I think my shit ass attitude comes, has been coming from. It's just because I've just been feeling like. So what up, happens man? in the community if things bring you down? Yeah, well, I got supports and stuff like that. You like, got a lot I, of I've been using here, my supports here them. as well. I have right. been. I wanted to get a bail changed because I didn't want to deal with it. So when I went to see my worker that day, remember Tom? I yeah. said, I'm going to see my, well, my lawyer. I want to get a bail changed, right? Hey, they, they were going to give it to me. They were like, okay, well, where are you going to go? And I was thinking maybe I'll go to my brothers or my exes. And then uh, I talked with Stuart for a while. And basically, Stuart said, well, what do you really want to do last? I said, well, I want to leave until it's time. You know, I want to. I want to I want to go through this, this program and be proud of myself when I leave. I don't want to just leave because fucking something's not going my way. I said in my lifetime, things that haven't been going my way, I'll start something like school. I started school, then you know I didn't like it too much. Or it wasn't what I enjoyed, so I quit. So that's why I'm still here. I didn't get that bail change. That's a big change from the first day you came in here. I'm glad you, I'm glad you can see that. Because you didn't see that when you first came in. No, I didn't. I never looked at it that way. But I, I've changed a lot here. And that's why I'm still here today, right now, until I can leave on good terms, have, my own, have an apartment set up. I, I mean, I've got a lot of good things planned for myself on the outside after this place. And it's just, I don't want it to look like I'm just going downhill and I'm going to end up using drugs, because that's not the plan. Anybody you want to talk to? I guess group's open. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody who took part in that. Thanks. Oh yeah, Kevin. One Thanks. year, right? Eh? You've been here for a year, right? So you've seen like 
probably a thousand people come and go. What have you learned from all these people that just basically sticks in your mind the most? I used to let some, like some of the people, they, they say, oh, I can't stand this place, it's fucking good. There's too many gossip, too much gossip, you know, I can't. You know, I think they just use that as a, I don't know, as a, yeah. I've and, heard that uh, one too a lot, too, in the last you know, six months. You know, they came here to work on themselves, you know, and, yeah. their, and their families, whatever, you know. Like somebody says, it's a crutch or whatever, or a, it's an yeah, an excuse, an excuse to go out and use. I think for it's a lot their, of people, they're craving talking, uh, mm -hmm. blaming other people. Yeah, I just don't let that shit bother you, and I just tell the other guys, you know, don't let it bother you. I hear a lot of them say that. And... Cool. Yeah, I feel really bad about school. Been thinking about it last night, and because I think half of it was slacking, and half of it was, I don't know, my ability to learn. Because you know, I, I've been sniffing since I was eight years old, and I don't know if that's if I'm using that as a an excuse or not. But but I've been thinking, you know, I wish I hadn't have sniffed. Smoke dope and you know I'm gonna learn what I learned here, you know, what I've learned like from all that slacking and not really taking the shit seriously. It's uh Well those are pieces that I look at too. Like hey, this is something I should work on too. I worked on all the other shit, you know. Right. My behaviors, you know, this is a piece that most people don't think like that, but I'm learning to recognize little things that, like obstacles. So when I go to college, you know, I'm going to learn what I, how, what messed me up here, what I'm not going to do when I'm in there. Because they don't take no shit in uh, university or college. <laughs> I got up this morning at 20 after 5 and I came downstairs and just had a cigarette. Looking around. And soon I'm not going to have, that these mornings are numbered and that I'm not going to be able to just get up, come downstairs, look outside and enjoy the view, enjoy the breeze, breathe in the nice fresh air. It's because I'll be in the urban sprawl in my apartment. <clears throat> Even if I don't like it that much here, I'm going to miss it. You know, I'm going to miss being part of this big thing. Pretty soon it's just going to be me and myself and I. Some of the pictures, they just go from easy going expression. Not a big smile or anything like okay, that's the most sophisticated, that's the academic one. Oh, you are too. <laughs> You're asking me if your hair looks good? What do I know about here? <laughs> A much bigger smile, a really full smile. <laughs> no, a really full smile, a really, that's it. I mean, like, a, we just want a million dollars smile. That's it. See, you got your smile. <laughs> this is really cool. I was on the bus today, and people were getting off the bus. Some people looked at me, and I was like, you know what? They, they, they're not looking at me saying, freak, you know, fucking drug addict, or, you know, low life. You know, they're just looking at me and getting off the bus, you know? There's someone who's tired from work, probably, right? They're looking at me as a normal fucking person who functions in this society, and I was like, wow, that's cool. That's deep, man. You know, so you can, you know, because uh, before on the bus, I would be all stoned and cracked out, and I'd be like, everybody's fucking looking at me. I feel like a piece of shit. I'm not worth anything. I don't fit in with any of these people. And here I am on the 5 o'clock bus coming home, rush hour. You know, I fit right in with everybody. I'm just a person in society struggling their way through life, you know, whatever, or what are not struggling, but I mean just working their way through life, doing it, doing what it is they're doing in their life, without drugs or substances that are bringing them down, and making them feel like shit. And that's how I felt before. I used to feel like shit, but today I just felt normal, man, and 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 uh, it was great. Hey, what's your hair? That's <laughs> good. No, it looks nice. These collars are good for the toilet seats as well. Okay, close it now. I want to give you a castle.
Thank you. Oh yeah. Like, I'm six months here and I don't look at it as such a big deal anymore, but I, I try to remember thinking about the people who were six months and thinking, oh my God, how do they do that? And, and now people look at me, I'm six months. So a new member came up to me yesterday. A really good guy, he seems like he's really here to do some changing, and he came up to me. He said, do you have a minute? I said, yeah. And I was like, what's this about? I had no clue what this would be about. And he starts telling me his problems and getting my advice on it. And I'm wondering, what the hell does this guy want to talk to me for? I come here straight to work, after work. Mukluks and moccasins. That's what they make. Maybe I'll work for a year there or something. Because he did say I want somebody for a year or two, he said. So maybe a year I'll stick it out. Yeah, I got an application too for that. Yellow cool. They have an evening class for now. That's what I was saying, I was just working and going to an evening class or something. Sure. Sure. Okay, good. Perfect for a short guy. Um, good thing I'm short. Yeah. So I wasn't on the other side. I had to get a better view of the city, you know. Nervous. Really nervous, man. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Excited. Am I allowed to like move in today or? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Ooh. Right on though, I'm, I'm pretty stoked as well. I'm really happy. Yeah. The view's lonely. That's one thing that gets me. The view is lonely. Okay, at BHF I can look out my window and see everybody having a cigarette. I see who's out there. Okay, I can go down there and have a chat with them if I want. Oh, here I just look outside and see trees and no people really. And it's lonely. <laughs> it's already lonely here, man. You guys want some stuff in here? Don't see if they're awake. You guys awake? Hey, Kev. Holy fuck. Hey man, I don't think you guys should. You guys should leave. I think. Why? Yeah, I don't want you guys in here doing that stuff in here. What the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. Even my um. In my Hi, uh, my name's Kevin. Uh, I have a, a couple said, people in. Uh, my mom's Look place way. that, that are uh, using here. solvents. Hey, um, I tried to ask them to leave politely. Okay. No, I didn't have to. Are you guys going to leave or what? 
We just Cindy, got here. Not you guys. These ones that are sniffing. Hey, Cindy. So you're going to leave or the cops got to come get you? Yeah, she said uh, she, uh, she didn't care. Well, I'm a big guy. I could have thrown them out, but I don't want to, you know, grab them and throw them out physically. But. And I'm in rehab too, eh? I'm in the Bureau Health Foundation. I don't need to come back and smell all this and the stuff I used to do, eh? And, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm getting a headache from here. I'm going to open some windows too. I'm going to take the dog home myself too. I was born in Alcohol. Yeah, but I don't think they will. They're just, you know, laying around and, you know, sniffing their mouth. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye bye. Like I said, you know, I still love them though, eh? Just like the Creator loved me when he seen me like this, eh? And, Enjoy what you're Don't doing. Be on us. Well, I'm hating you because you guys are doing it in the house, you know, my mom's house. I don't have to. Your mom, your mom does it too here. Yeah, why, why, why is she doing it? Because you guys bring that shit here. Oh, you guys are, you guys are hating, but not respecting. You know, like I come here to visit my mom, and I gotta come to, I gotta come visit. Smell, does this smell? Fuck, you guys should know I'm in rehab trying to change my life and I, I gotta well, come here to smell you, this and her, see right? this. That's you, not her, right? I really, I really appreciate that. Yeah, look, look There's no reason I'm to go back. Them. You know what, don't judge people before I'm you not get judging yourself. I'm judging nobody. I just told my, I told oh, them I love my family. Yeah, Even though they're drinking, I still love them just like the Creator loved me when he seen and, uh, me like that. Your mom is not a drinker. Your mom is a drinker. They judge you. I'm not, a, I'm not gonna say bad. Sniffer. They judge you. Tell her to me. When you see us drinking, doesn't like um make you want to do? Not anymore, no. Before it did, but not anymore. The last how long, it how long has it been when you drank? Or Since I last last time I did it. Yeah. Probably thirteen months. So it doesn't bother you when it when it happens? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
making the choice because you know you're gonna end up in making a bad choice. So it's it's one day at a time, man. Today I'm not gonna use. Tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and say the same thing. Even though I got mad at my mom and well, not mad, just upset. Because each time I told him, uh, each Friday I'd phone, I'd say, I'm coming over tomorrow. And he says, okay, well, we'll see you tomorrow. And I show up, they're drinking. She's drunk, eh? She's back drinking, and she quit for a while. And I don't know, I went to soccer mentoring, and I talked to her that Sunday, too, and told her I'd stop by, because eh? owed, they owed me money, eh? Because I helped them out the week before for, for beer, eh? They're all hurting and dry, and... They didn't know. They didn't. They didn't know I had money. They didn't ask me. I just, you know, I said, "What do you guys want? Tobacco?" They were out of smoke. So we want tobacco or beer. So I gave them the money for uh, the two of those two-liter beer things. Because yeah. I know how it is, you know, because from because I've been there and it's not fun, you know, like to be dry like that. I'm going to school. Oh, yeah, I was making extra plans and Sean came. Yeah, he was saying, what if this happens, what if that happens? And answers like, Qua. I couldn't answer them. You know, like, I forget what they were, but they were so small. And I had my plan ready, you know, just to move out there. So maintain a presence here, you know, so to go to school. Spend most of my time at home studying, you know. But I still go out, you know, maybe go to the movies or something. And, no, that's a good plan right there. Because I could always come here, you know, like on my own time too, you know. I want to sleep in a, for a whole week, every morning. Maybe I'd do that if I was on the outside. Get enough rest and, you know, one week coming every evening and moving out. I don't know, that's what I was, I'm just, maybe I'm just paranoid. I haven't even been back there once. <laughs> not even once since I've been gone, man. It's crazy. Oh, uh, not too much. Uh, I'm just busy with the courts still. It's the going to jail court. Uh, I go to go every twice a week now. I fucked up once. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, I don't want it. I didn't want it. <laughs> I don't know. I fucking. I just used, man. I ended up, uh, I ended up just making the wrong choice and got high. And uh, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't nothing to be proud of. That's for sure. It's kind of shameful, actually. It seemed that when I got out of there, I was on my own, and then you know, it was more of a, I'm closer to the, to the real world again. I'm back in the real world and it just, it's different. It's its different than being in a residential treatment and then being out of there. It's, it's because like, how does it go? I don't know, it just seems a lot safer and easier to abstain when you're in there. When you're out, you're basically all on your own and you know, you, you tend to fall back in, into your old patterns and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I, I was I was really upset about it. I was like, uh, I didn't understand. Like, how could I stay clean for eight months and and then all of a sudden it was just like that treatment didn't even exist in a way because I went and used again. And then I was really mad about like the fact that I, I felt like I wasted all that time. But my uh, counselor and I worked it out that well, I didn't really waste all that time because obviously I was able to gain control of my life again and get back on the right track and get back in the right order of things, you know. What would I do differently? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't start, if I was getting, well, you know, when I was getting that bored and that kind of lonely feeling and uh, feeling of, uh, 
I, I would I would have used more resources to let people know I was feeling that way instead of just covering it up and thinking I was going to be okay because I'm sure that if I had had help from somebody, I never would have made those choices to, to start drinking and to start using again. We're not the guys, Victor. Okay. Yeah, I'm on you. You're a fucking Sioux Indian, huh? Yeah. You want to fight me now? No, I'm happy. You're the go, bro. What's going on here? You yeah, want to fight me now? So no, go to bed. Okay, you got to go, man. Okay, you guys are See you later. Later. Mom. I told my mom, I'm sorry to disappoint you, mom. She was proud of me when she seen that picture. Mm -hmm. My grade 12. <laughs> she hung it up everywhere. My brother even hung it up in his on his TV. Even though we don't get along, I was surprised he hung it up. That's yeah, the one okay. thing my key worker said about me, Kevin. What one thing you learn is you know you fall down, you get back up, yeah. dust yourself off, and that's what I gotta do with this. But I haven't, I feel like a hypocrite now. But it's all for education, man, to help those yeah. other guys that are gonna watch it, you know. I know, you to give them out. confidence, you know, like they're gonna see this, oh, there's a guy here, okay. This is they watched the first half, oh, he's doing good, okay. They're not gonna expect this coming. I just left, and now he's drinking this. <laughs> but that'll be educational, man. I want that for you guys to know. Don't fucking, don't be stupid and foolish. And, not to put you guys down, but I felt bad about when I left St. Norbert. Fifty, almost sixty months, I, I was there and I fucking gave up. They, they thought I gave up. I said, no, I did not give up. Look, I didn't go there for nothing all that time. I got my grade 12, I learned a lot of shit. The, it's like a hunter, a warrior. The village or the whatever. Gives them tools here. Here's a bow and arrow. Here's an arrow. Here's a billy club, you know, whatever, to fight and battle. We're going to show you. That's what BHF did to me. They showed me how to hunt for myself, go in the woods alone, and how to fight in war and how to protect myself. And that's what they did. It's kind of like that. And, but they gave me those tools, those bow and arrows, and that, all those weapons, and I just laid them down for an hour. Eh? When I get a clear mind, I'll, I'll pick them up again. Yeah.